G'day guys, welcome back to a very cheerful episode of Just the Tips after a wonderful round of footy. My tipping was terrible, I don't care, the Eagles won the Derby, so good. And if anyone wants my specific thoughts on how that game went, <laughs> you can probably find it uh, on social media, various comments, stories, uh, comments on Drewzy's video. Uh, but I do have a True Eagle channel as well, which I've been active on while I've been away talking about everything West Coast. But today we're going to talk about round seven. Before we do, let's review quickly how last weekend went. So I'll get up my tips here. Now, last week, I tipped very heavily on gut feel and vibe, um, which is not necessarily advisable. Sometimes I tip with my head, sometimes I tip on vibe, and generally speaking, I'm equally mediocre in both respects. However, I made a great, good start in terms of vibe. So if you remember last week, I tipped the Bulldogs to beat St Kilda, which seemed unexpected at the time because they had just lost to Essendon, and the Bulldogs came out and rolled them. Now, the unfortunate reality is I got I changed that tip right before bed because, you know, here in the States, the game starts, like, while I'm asleep. So I was like, oh, I think Libertore's out, Jamaro is out. I was like, I better tip the Saints. Sure enough, I paid the price for that as soon as I woke up. Ten goals, my God. I also tipped Essendon on Vibe. That one could have gone either way. Thankfully, I was right with that one. So it was a good start in the Vibe stakes, but then Port Adelaide uh, fell a fair way short of uh, Collingwood in the end. Obviously, they got away in front. Collingwood flicked the switch and uh, made that tip look very silly. I just thought the power had a little bit more momentum, looked a little bit more crisp this season. Um, but I also ignore the fact that last year, Port Adelaide were good and they lost that game by 81 points. Uh, tip Carlton, again, vibe, again. So that, that was a fairly good tip. Obviously, again, another topsy-turvy game. Weird, wet, wacky weekend of results. Very nice. Uh, Brisbane, I tipped over the Cats, um, again, Probably based on the fact that I thought Brisbane had come good a little bit, and we're still learning about Geelong. This this win for Geelong really gives them some legitimacy. Then there was the Derby, and I uh, I did tip Fremantle in that one. Ah, well, that didn't go to plan, did it? Sydney over Gold Coast. I did flirt with the idea of tipping the Suns last week. I'm glad that I didn't. And I really did think North would just inexplicably win against Hawthorne, and they fell well short. So... I got three out of eight, and then we'll go through what everyone else got. So if you don't remember, guys, we do have a tipping competition for members of the channel. Anyone else who wants to join, there is another league as well, a general tipping league, and we have a fantasy competition as well. So I'm going to go through how everyone did and all the winners from those competitions. So, so let's start with the members tipping competition, and the winner of the week is actually Luigi, who was a co-founder of True Footy uh, in our members tipping competition, got five correct tips and a margin of 60, I'm guessing... Lewis forgot to tip the margin there because that was the margin, 60. Um, five correct tips is the winner this week out of, I don't know, 30 odd people. Uh, and then we have Marcy, who was the general tipping winner with seven out of eight and a margin of 52. Well done, Marcy. Again, no one tipped a perfect round this week. Now, the leader of the members tipping competition and the overall tipping competition is the same bloke, Chief Wardo. Absolute shout out, 41 correct tips and a margin of 242. And our fantasy league leader is again, Tully Griffiths with a average of 1997. Now, I do notice that average has come away down. Makes me feel a little bit better. I had a horrific, possibly one of my worst ever weeks in fantasy this week. And I feel like I have a good team. Really frustrating, but it makes me feel better that I think everyone did poorly. But well done, Tully, either way. Back to back, at least two weeks in a row, leading our fantasy competition. Now, I also want to shout out a brand new member of the channel. Welcome aboard to The Playlist Guy, the latest member of the True Footy YouTube channel. I really appreciate the support. You're an absolute legend. Now, let's get into round seven. Now, I have got Squiggle back. I'm going to put it on the screen for you on my phone. And I'm hoping the viewing experience is not compromised. So we got Richmond versus Melbourne at the MCG, the Anzac Day Eve game, which I realize is tomorrow by the time this comes out. So the Tigers versus the Ds, huh? So let's talk about the Tigers. First of all, they are coming off a big loss against West Coast. Both of these teams had the bye. Um, injury depleted as well. I'm not too sure what sort of reinforcements they'll get back for this game, but either way, We've seen Richmond on a little bit of a decline. I mean, they had a really good win against Sydney, and they're just faltering a little bit with their injury situation and smashing the contested stakes against West Coast. I don't, I don't really know how much to analyze or knock Richmond for. Um, I think they're pretty pragmatic about the situation they're in, and that makes this game really tough against the Ds, who were beaten by the Brisbane Lions as well at the, at the G, which is a big win for the Lions, and then ultimately they didn't back that up the following week. But... The Ds, I think, have generally looked pretty good this year. Still one of the better sides of the comp. I am not overreacting to that one loss. So all in all, I think this will be a tough fixture 
for Richmond to try and get the win. It would be a bit of a boil over if they do. That being said, I mean, they've had one blemish this year of a bad performance in Perth. But other than that, they've played with a bit of spunk. So while they're missing some players, they get a bit of a rest now. If they can keep some belief, they might just make this game closer than you'd expect. I don't think there's a scenario where I can tip Richmond in this game. But I think it might be a decent game for most of it, and Melbourne will win. Melbourne are clearly the better side. I'm going to say Melbourne by 24 points. 23 points. My fat thumb, thumbs can't pick an accurate margin. <laughs> so I was one off. There we go. Then we got Anzac Day. Now, this could actually be good because Essendon, what are they, four wins? I needed to double check that. Check that. They are four wins, yes. So they've beaten Adelaide most recently. They beat the Saints. They beat the Dogs. And they beat Hawthorne. So again, we're still getting a read on some of those teams. I'd say the Dogs are probably the most formidable opponent out of all of those guys. Why am I getting ads for women's clothing? I promise that's not based on my search history. Essendon have looked good without being great. I feel like against Adelaide, they could have put the game away and Adelaide nearly pinched that game. Essendon you know, had far more scoring shots and I'm not trying to um, mark them down, but I think it's good to contextualize because this is a really tough opponent in Collingwood who really seemed to click into gear and get their act together in that game against Port Adelaide when they fell away behind. So... Uh, tough one to guess on margin. I do, I do think an upset is possible here. It is possible, if not for the fact that Collingwood really looked good for a good passage of that game against the power. So I don't want to... I, like, There's a part of me that wants to credit Essendon and give them a real sniff for winning this game. And I do think in front of a huge crowd, you never know. You just never know. That being said, I think I'm going to go conservative on this particular one. And I'll say Collingwood by 30 points. GWS versus Brisbane. Now, this will be an interesting one. I feel like GWS have flagged a little, got a little bit ahead against Carlton, no doubt. Carlton came back and won that, of course. Carlton are a good side. The game's in Melbourne, even though Carlton probably don't fancy themselves a, a big Marvel team, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, again, not sure how much to mark GWS down for that, but it's probably been a few weeks in a row of performances where they've just looked a little bit flatter than their absolute best, which is not a huge problem because they've only dropped the one game. And the Brisbane Lions have been all over the shop, really. Like, they beat the Ds in Melbourne and then took on Geelong. Now, Geelong are the last undefeated side left in the competition. So there's that, but there is also the fact that Brisbane have just clearly been all over the place as well. I mean, they haven't won a game at home this year, which is just bizarre. If you'd made that, if you'd made a video and called it, like, bold predictions for 2024 and say Brisbane are winless at home by round seven, you'd, you'd be laughed at. And that's exactly what's happened. So I looked at the Monica uh, oval results between these two sides. I think Brisbane have won the last couple here, but I think it goes further than that. I think they've won the last five against GWS. So I'm actually, not just because of that, I am going off vibe here. I think the Brisbane Lions are going to win this just to just continue to fuck with people. Like we, we all don't know what to tip Brisbane. I don't know if I've tipped Brisbane correctly too many times this year at all. Probably not. Um, and therefore, yeah, I'm probably probably consigning them to a defeat with this tip, but I think the Lions will upset set the Giants. I think Giants are a little bit vulnerable. Brisbane have a point to prove. Yes, they did it against Geelong as well, but Geelong are very good, it seems. So I'll tip, uh, tip the Lions by 12 points. Port versus St. Kilda. So Port, context, six on the ladder versus 13th. St. Kilda are two and four. That did not look like that was going to be the case when they beat Collingwood. And, you know, since then, there's been a loss to Essendon. There's been a loss to the Western Bulldogs. There's been a loss to the Giants, where they played, you know, not great and then came back and nearly won. So not the most convincing run of form for St. Kilda. They do look a little bit listless. I'll stop short of, you know, saying there's no positives and they're hopeless like some in the media are saying. Uh, but that is a bad stretch of form. And it doesn't get any easier this week against Port Adelaide. Now, Port Adelaide, again, over the last fortnight, it's hard to really get too much excited about their form. I mean, they did get in front of Collingwood and then fell away badly, where Collingwood just lifted their pressure was intense. Um, and then the week before that, they were kind of, I won't say lucky to beat Fremantle, but that game really could have gone either way. And look what Fremantle's done the following week. So either way, though, this game in Adelaide, I, I still think there's still a fair gap between these two sides. So I'm not gonna put too much more thought into it. I think this, the power by about 35 points. North Melbourne versus Adelaide. This game is at Blunston. This game is at Blunston. Now, in my head, I had it that North Melbourne are particularly hard to beat at Blunston. Um, but obviously, when you look through the results, there's not a lot of wins there because the team has not won a lot of games lately. And some of the results haven't been great. Now, the last game there, if I'm not mistaken, was a big win over the Suns in the final round last year. So there is some form there, but it's also kind of been all over the shop and they've had some big losses there as well. Adelaide as well, you know, another 
out of form side of the competition. Absolutely. One good performance in six we've seen now. And again, against Essendon, if Essendon had been a bit more polished, Adelaide wouldn't really have been in the position to even win that game. So they've got serious issues. I think these two sides met last year, or at least the last time these two sides met uh, at this ground specifically. I think Adelaide had a big win. Um, That might have been 2022, so we're a little bit removed from that. This one's iffy. And the reason it's iffy is not because I necessarily think there's no talent gap between these two sides. I think there's a there is at the moment. I still think Adelaide are better, but North Melbourne, you know, it could be one of those sides to make a statement. I, I did say that last week, and they fell well short. I think I'm going to tip the Crows here. I think I'm going to say the Crows win this by 22 points. Here we go, match of the round. This is the one a lot of us will be looking forward to outside of our own teams playing, of course. Geelong versus Carlton. Now, I've consistently had Carlton, I think, higher on my power rankings. Maybe they might have fallen below last round, I think, to the Cats. But the Cats are now undefeated, and I don't think they've had the toughest run of form, but you do have to give them some credit for beating the Lions in the way they did. And yes, the Lions have been erratic, but I mean, they have just come off two wins prior to that game, and there is an element of knowing that Geelong are a good, consistent team when they're not injury decimated as well, which was the case in 2023. And they're building that trust back. And now I think it's fair to say that Geelong probably start favorites in this game. Now, Carlton do have stars all over the field and it was a good win last week against the Giants, a must win game to some extent, considering both teams will be in the thick for top four, you'd imagine. This one's tough because I really think if Carlton switch on, they can win this. But I think think I'm gonna tip the Cats. I think they've earned that from me. I know that's not the best way to do your tipping, which team has earned my tips. You're not gonna get very far doing that. Uh, that being said, I just feel a little bit more confident. I, I don't feel like Geelong are going to show up to a big game like this and not turn up. You know what I mean? So I think they're going to win this by 12 points, but it'll be that'll be the game to watch this week. Ooh, Fremantle versus Western Bulldogs. This is tricky. This is tricky. Uh, the you know Fremantle, I think, have had one really poor game, uh, and I'm so glad it was us that inflicted that pain. Um, but other than that, I think it's been a fairly steady run of form and superior to the Dogs in some way. But the dogs, what the dogs have done that Fremantle haven't is be able to put some distance between them and the opposition. Fremantle have struggled to score. And regardless of what happens further up the field, Fremantle have so many issues at the moment that now I'm looking at this game at Optus Stadium and I'm not sure they can kick a winning score. So in the derby, Fremantle got beaten more or less at what they're strong at, okay? Contested possessions and clearance. Uh, okay, Fremantle did win the clearances in this game narrowly, but they were smashed and contested ball. They're also really good at suppressing other teams inside 50s. They lost the inside 50s by eight. That being said, they only conceded 48 overall and were losing the game by 64 points at one point. So a bit of a mixed bag performance, that's for sure. It wasn't a good night for them. And the Bulldogs, you know, I think they've had two poor performances this year, like really poor. Um, well, against Melbourne, 45 points. You'd say that's somewhat poor. They were quite poor against Essendon as well, where they lost quite heavily. Everything around that, I think, has been pretty good. Like, their other loss was against Geelong very narrowly. And, you know, even when they butchered West Coast, I was still impressed because I thought they were playing to a really high standard. They've got ways to punish you, and they might have a little bit more confidence. So I could see Fremantle pulling out a bit of a statement win, but the scores of like 60-odd for the last month make me concerned here. I think the Bulldogs might have a little bit too much for them. So I'm going to say the Dogs win this by 14 points or whatever it is. Here we are, the blockbuster of the round, Gold Coast versus West Coast. I have not tipped West Coast once this year. This one now looks like a much better game than it might have done at the start of the season. You would have said Gold Coast by plenty, but I'm not so sure anymore. So there's one win separating them on the ladder. Gold Coast wins have been against Richmond, Adelaide, and Hawthorne. And in fairness, they did put Hawthorne to the sword to some extent with closer wins over Adelaide and Richmond. West Coast have beaten Richmond and Fremantle. So I think there's been a fairly equitable fixture so far. What would have made me concerned about this game is clearances and contested possession. In my head, that's what Gold Coast do well. And yet West Coast rank higher in both of those stats on the six rounds. Like I said, fairly comparable fixture so far. For me, I think it will be a concern for West Coast if they lose Barass out of this. As I record this, they're challenging the ban. Um, I think structurally, considering how many other outs West Coast have down back, I think that will leave us a little bit vulnerable. Um, not to preempt excuses and not like that. I, I still don't know who's the better side out of these two teams. I would have said Gold, Gold Coast comfortably you know, prior to the Fremantle game, but now I'm not so sure. And I think I'm going to have to tip my boys here. I don't have to. I'm going to choose to. I'm not sure. I think this is 50-50. 
but I'm going to throw them a bone this week and tip on Vibe. Even Vibe is 50-50 for me. Bah, screw it. I want to tip the Eagles. Let me have this. I'll say the Eagles win by 20 points, but again, not really sure on that one. And then the final game of the round, we got the Hawks and the Swans at the MCG. Hawthorne, you know, they've had some bright patches this year for sure, but obviously that's uh, been given a full stop by their big win over North Melbourne, putting some gap between them and what you'd have to say is probably the worst team in the competition right now in North Melbourne. Now, we did see Hawthorne have a sluggish start last year and then play another bottom side contender, smash them. I can't remember who it was, but it was 116 points. So could this be a bit of a fire starter? Oh my God, I quoted Dwayne Russell accidentally. Could it be? Could it, could it ignite their season a little bit? I'm not sure. This is a really tough fixture. The Swans are clearly one of the best sides of the competition. They're five and one. They're two, uh, sorry, they're second on the ladder as I look at my screen right here. I feel like... I feel like recently I said that Hawthorne have a knack for beating Sydney and then they got slaughtered and I can't remember exactly what game that was. But the Swans were far too good against Gold Coast last week. Again, how much do you read into that? Well, you'd say that Gold Coast are a fair bit better than Hawthorne, for sure, because they just slaughtered them the week before that and Sydney beat them. So that's a really simplistic way of looking at it. I realise that. And I also just think that doesn't mean a lot if Hawthorne have built some confidence now, which they probably have, and it's a home game. I think I'm going to tip Sydney here. I'm a little bit iffy about it, um, but I'm going to say if Sydney win, they win fairly comfortably by six goals. Is there potential for an upset? It would rely on Sydney having an off day, but Hawthorne can do that to teams someday. 36 points or whatever it was. There you go. That is the ladder, guys. Have a look. Wrap your eyes around that. West Coast up to 13th, baby. Three and four. Um, we got St. Kilda into the bottom four. Wow. So I think that would rely on West Coast winning. So if West Coast win, St. Kilda drop into the bottom four. Wow. That shocks me. And then you've got the, the Cats still undefeated, naturally. Again, this is probably the toughest test yet. Bulldogs back into 7th. Uh, Brisbane creeping up to 10th with their win over the, uh, the Giants. And then Collingwood into the 8th as well. And Essendon there in ninth. So interesting, interesting stuff. Look at Essendon's percentage, 89%. Crazy stuff. Well, there you go, guys. I hope that swiggle recording worked. It died halfway through, so hopefully it doesn't get too weird. Um, but for now, let me know in the comments what your tips are, what you, what's your game of the round. Game of the round is definitely Geelong versus Carlton. Upset of the round for... Are the Lions a genuine underdog against the Giants? That's the one I've... Well, that's the one I've tipped. Otherwise, Hawthorne versus Sydney is a little bit iffy for me as well. That's not really based on anything. Fremantle versus the Bulldogs is probably the one I'm least sure about. There's a few tough ones in there, but I'm excited for it. I probably get a chance to do a power rankings tomorrow as well, guys. This is the second last week of me being in America, so we'll return to our usual programming very soon. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.